I don't know any professional who doesn't learn from the people they care for. Having that voice of somebody who's been through this, good and bad, can really make you sit back and think, I need to think how I do this now. She told me a number of years ago that I only remembered a few months ago that when one of her brothers was dying in a, a hospital, she was sitting by his bedside and the window was open and there was lots of traffic going past and she heard people talking and she got really angry saying, do you not know what's happening here? My brother's dying. She just wanted the world to stop, which oftentimes you do with an illness mm -hmm. such as Alzheimer's and dementia. So if I've put myself in the position to try and figure out what she would want at her end of life care. Now some people really like to get their business things in order and get themselves organised and they know exactly what they want. For other people that's really, really difficult. One of, one of the, the particular difficulties that we had with my son who was about uh, probably 31 at the time and we recognised that there was a dementia problem and I'd gone to the doctor and I was refused access to dementia services due to his age. I wasn't interested in um, what age group people were, I was only interested in uh, tapping into the service that had the required facilities and expertise that could help my son. Sometimes doctors and nurses can be very clinical, for want of a better word, about talking about a subject that's way too deeply personal. We're not saying that uh, we need to know everything um, because nobody has a crystal ball, but it would be nice um, to be able to uh, part with a person uh, knowing that you've done all you could for them. So I think it's that continuum. It's not about that. We're going to talk about this just now. It's about preparing and I still think it's about timing. I think just having those conversations earlier would have saved a lot of pain. You know, it's already a painful situation but it just could have taken away some of it from us because trust me, you're saving them a lot of pain later on. They're just going to be more upset, more frustrated with the whole process when it comes to the to the end of that person's life. And I think if you know how to deal with those conversations, you get so much more out of the person and out of the situation. You learn much more. You can do a lot more. You can probably be a lot more helpful to that person or that family and actually go away and think, do you know what, I've actually made a difference now just because I listened. When I was a 17-year-old nurse, I remember being told the last nursing duty you perform in your career is for the dying and dead patient. Make it the best. Helen was a huge part of our lives. Yeah. We work here long shifts, long days. Like We work over all the holidays and, you know, it's we're a huge part of people's lives mm -hmm. and, you know, it's a huge, huge privilege, but you do get emotional about it. That's also for professionals um, where they are dealing with end-of-life issues, that there also is emotional support for them. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And on that note, if support is not being offered, it's really important for professionals to ask for it mm -hmm. and not just to sit back and, mm -hmm. and with their, their angst and, and worries mm -hmm. and anxieties. Mm -hmm.